Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Here we are on day four, journey to become wealthy. Um, today, we probably gonna just do some stock looking, right? And I really wanted to jump on today because I saw crypto. I've been getting some crypto questions and NFT questions and things like that. But mainly what I'm going to look at is tomorrow, you know, get preparing for Monday um, and also answering some of the crypto questions I've been getting. So to start, um, ways that I buy my crypto are through Coinbase and I use Robinhood. Um, some of the reasons I use Robinhood is because it's free trading, right? You trade free on Robinhood, but Coinbase actually charges fees, which is how they make most of their money. So apparently, um, today, some of the, one of the things I noticed was on today, Bitcoin, Bitcoin hit one of its lows. So let's check this out. Bitcoin, they hit 47,956. Perfect buying range. I bought $300 in it today at 47,997. I'm up $5 already. Simple, simple plays like that. You know, I would make a difference. Just actually paying attention to small things like that. And pretty much most of the crypto market is down today. So if you caught it at a low point right before it went back up, you may have already made a few dollars. Um, as far as the stocks, we can check out the futures, right? Let me. So I, just in case some people missed like one of my previous lives, I'll start. I'll tell you how I do this again, how I try and prepare for the day before. What I usually do, I come here and Google futures. And you see the different things. So they, they're just now posting. Just posted an hour ago. Just posted 32 minutes ago. And some of the highlights. S&P 500 futures gained slightly despite recent tech stock selling. But Bitcoin's weekend route. Uh, Dow Jones futures. Market woes intensifies DocuSign craters. Apple, Tesla, a key. So let's let's click on this one. Because we, we all like Apple and Tesla, right? Let's see what they got to say. So if y'all are watching live, y'all can follow along. Feel free to follow along because I know some people may be, hey, I learn as I do, right? That, that's that's me. I learn when I do things or, you know, I actually had to pay attention to them. So Dow Jones futures and S&P 500 futures rose slightly Sunday evening while NASDAQ futures edged lower. The price of Bitcoin and Ethereum plunged Saturday, the latest sign of a risk off mindset hitting financial markets. But cryptocurrencies rebounded by Sunday. So if you'd have been hitting there yesterday, Bitcoin, I think, got down to $46,000. If you'd have been able to get some of that, you'd have been up more. And I'm $5 right now, but you'd have been up pretty good yesterday. Um, let's see. Stock market suffered the sharp losses last week. Yes, it did. We all saw that. I showed you guys the red days on Friday. So let's see what the stock heat map looking like. It, it's looking like it's some mixed going to be some mixed emotions on Monday as far as what's going to happen in the stock market. Um, sharp losses. We're talking about DocuSign, Adobe held up, Microsoft and NVIDIA showing some strain. Tesla stock faces a key test as EV rivals such as Lucid, Rivian, Xpeng, and Lee Auto plunge. So all on plunge, all the EV stocks. So you know it's, it's, not, it's the entire sector. The entire market is pretty much just having red days. Says Apple closed with a weekly gain. So pretty much the market's a little bit of everywhere. Let's see if we can check out this stock heat map. And like I said, it was red everywhere. You see, we got red everywhere. So no no one sector suffered alone. You do see some green over here in consumer goods. You got things like Procter and Gamble that did well, Walmart did well, but even then that was just for a day, right? That don't mean they they were up for the week. And these aren't really any high growth that I see. We got 1%, 0.81%, 1.34%. These are all small percentages. Even real estate, 0.27%. But you see most of this area is looking red. All of this stuff. Everything was pretty much red. Let's close this. Yep, everything's looking pretty much red. I don't see anything that just did really really well or crazy good to where you know i might want to jump in there early morning on monday so right now for monday my advice is going to be let's let's watch the market um i will say now i you can do some trade in the first hour 
I don't usually buy in the, in the pre market unless I see something that's looking really good because the pre this you know stock game is about patience, right? You want to see how things will go, and the stock market is most volatile within the first hour and the last hour. I mean, it goes crazy. It'll you know things can go from one percent to two percent, three percent up or down either way, and then rebound for the rest of the day. That's when it you know normalizes. Because most people are trying to get in and get those quick day trades and swing trades. And they want to get their money, get in and get out. And they'll leave people like us, those normal traders who just want to buy or invest. They'll leave us hanging. We end up holding the bag. Now, we, of course, we may get our money back there too. If you bought a company that you really enjoy, a company that you really like, then, yeah, of course, you'll get your money back in a day or two or a week or a month or whatever. But you don't want to be caught in all that volatility. So at least I try not to. Uh, let's see. Other news, so again, I'm using my Robin Hood app. 10 COVID-19 cases were detected on the Norwegian cruise line ship. So I'm definitely not investing in any cruises this week, right? Disney at Canto tops box office for second straight week. Disney may be a good play to jump in. DocuSign, for some reason, this joke has been bottoming out. It's down 42%. And that's probably worse than that for the week. That's probably one day 42%. It's down $100. So anybody who put did a put option on that, oh yeah, it's terrible, man. They were at they went from two thirty two to one thirty four. That's a hundred dollar drop, over fifty percent. If you had a put option in there, which I had some friends who did, you made a you made some money on that one. So you made a good bit. Um, as far as that goes, so I think that's gonna be it for the news. I don't see anything major happening. So. What I'm going to talk about, though, is that crypto. I, so I'll show you my Coinbase account. And unfortunately, I don't use Coinbase Pro. If you use Coinbase Pro, you can do things like limit orders and stop orders and stop losses, kind of similar to stocks. So you can do that in stocks, but you you can't do it with Coinbase unless you have Pro. But you can set limits to buy these stocks. Like I told you, I, when I bought Bitcoin, I actually set a limit on it. So let me click on it. I might still have my limit on there. I have a limit order for to spend five hundred dollars if it hits. Um, I yeah. Did it buy? It? it looked like it may have buy. So it's a limit buy. I'll click on that, and what you'll see here it says five hundred dollars if Bitcoin gets down forty six thousand five hundred dollars. Forty six thousand five hundred dollars has proven to be one of Bitcoin's bounce back point. So if it ever gets that low, I'm I'm guaranteed to get whatever money back. And y'all saw what I did. I put 300 in at 47, and I already got four dollars back. So if it gets down any lower than that, you know it's gonna bounce back every time. So I still have that order in. So if it hits 46.5, and this is a limit buy, and I can show you how to do that. So you come here, and even on your app, I can show. I'll do it on the app, but you got limit orders, market orders. You can buy or sell. If I do a limit order, it tells me how much, how much I want to spend, how much does the stock have to be. I put forty six thousand dollars, and I put how much I'm going, how much am I willing to put into that? And at this point, I want to put five hundred dollars, and that's it. And you hit review order. You see, so that's how that works. Even if a sale, so if I want to sell it at a limit order, so if I want to say, hey, this joker hit fifty seven nine nine seven. That means my money's pretty much made some money back and I just want to get out of it. So I'll sell five my however much when Bitcoin hits that forty that fifty seven nine nine seven. I'm sorry, I may have did that last one backwards too. So the amount I'm gonna spend when Bitcoin hits that price. So if Bitcoin hits forty six thousand. And yeah, I'll, this is how many, how much I'll get. And this is how much I'll spend. So excuse me if I did that wrong. You select the limit order. You put the amount you want to spend and the price you want it at. So like I said, you can't do that on Coinbase unless you have Coinbase Pro. But, you know, you can sit here and watch it. You can pay attention to it. So things like Ethereum right now on a major sale. You see it pretty much everything is down. Solano. Let's see. I know we got some Shiba. Shiba lovers, Dogecoin lovers. I know Dogecoin for sure was down. So let me hit back. I'm going to hit go back. See if I can get back to the. Um, let's 
those coins. Those coins down major. I mean, it was at 30 some cent. It says 16 now. How it, you know, that, that's that's a pretty big drop for the those coin lovers. Is that 22? Now it's, it was at 22. Now it's currently at 16. So that's a major drop. That's a major hit to those coin, especially for people who've been long holes. Any long holders, I know they hurting on that one. Um, Ethereum Classic. Ethereum. And you see, I got a little bit of skin in Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and Ethereum. And I got some Bitcoin in here, too. Some, uh, well, I, I must have sold it already. But yeah, just well, Ethereum Classic, I have some in. And I'm down big on Ethereum Classic. I should average down, but I haven't yet. So those are just some things I would say as far as this week. If you want to jump in any crypto today while it's low and ride the way back up over the week, or if you want to jump in any of these stocks that came down, because pretty much everything has came down. Um, I can't predict tomorrow because it pretty much seems like it could swing either way. But I would definitely recommend waiting on that first 30 minutes to an hour of the morning and see how stocks settle and then go from there and make your purchases. How do I know when to sell? Some things I do but when I'm selling. So I look for 20%. When I make 20% on my money, 9 times 10, I'm going to sell some of it. So I know that 20%, I guarantee that profit. If I get 50% or 100%, Oh, I'm out of there. I'm going to sell that, all of that. If I hit 100%, percent i am sell all of it, and then I'm going to come back. And when it comes back down to, to my price or a little bit you know, higher, I'll buy back in again, but especially if it's a stock I believe in, like Tesla. I bought Tesla at 5.91. I bought two shares at 5.91. When it hit 100% last week, I sold one. Now, I'm still going to keep the other one because I know, and I got Tesla in another account, but I sold one of them. Because that's 100% profit. And if it ever comes back down to that 591, I'll be buying that one back because I made my money on it. And, you know, it paid for itself at this point. And, and there's several other stocks in here, but for sure, I try and take 20% off. Anytime I buy a stock, I, I and, you know, I have those price targets. I showed y'all the price targets. So if you buy one, remember you go to your stock charts. I mean, you know, you just come in here. You type in what, what your stock is. So let's see. Um, we're going to look at Tesla price prediction. Tesla price prediction. You know, so it's good when you buy a stock to go into it knowing how much are you willing to pay and how much do you want to make on it. When Tes Tesla has a high of 1400 and a median of 860 I got it at five ninety one, and I hit it all the way through to twelve hundred dollars. So you know, I, you gotta imagine I was holding that joker, and you know, waiting on my time to come. So when I buy this, okay, they say it's got a lower sixty seven dollars. Let's see, I'll come back. I'm gonna go click on Tesla. So Tesla, I got told you I got it at five ninety one, right? So, and for me, again, when we buying these stocks, we looking for what are they worth? So that's where StockCharts dot com. See what people been paying for, you know, and this gives us a roundabout average, right? How much have people been paying for? It? So I'm gonna show y'all how to how to know when to get in and how to know when to get out. And it's just a quick lesson, real quick. So then we're gonna check our hundred day moving average. All right, for the past hundred days, people been getting Tesla at eight forty three. So if you bought it at un under eight forty three. You getting a good deal now. The past two hundred days, somebody got it at two hundred and fifty, seven hundred and fifty. I'm sorry. So if you get under that seven hundred and fifty, oh, you hitting even better. Like you saw, I got it at five hundred and ninety one. So you know, I I had a heavy discount. So we know we can buy it at these prices, right? Everybody's been paying for it at these prices. These are good buy prices, and it's predicted to hit eight hundred and sixty to fourteen hundred. So if you get this close, or if you get your twenty percent. Go ahead and sell off. Wait for it to come back. Wait for it to cool back down, and then you jump back in. Yeah, seven fifty, not two fifty. I'm sorry about that. So wait for it to cool back down, and then you jump back in. So two things: when to buy. I try and buy around this hundred day moving average or cheaper. And you see, it has an RSI of forty four, and it's at a thousand dollars right now. So it's it's considered slightly oversold 
at a thousand dollars and fourteen one thousand fourteen dollars. So it's considered slightly oversold. This could be a possibly good buy point, but again, I want to get mines under this average because this is what people were willing to pay for the past one hundred days. So that's where I'm gonna buy it. And here, these are good prices on where I would sell it. Or I would just watch for my 20%. So like you see here, I'm already up 70% on this. But I told you, I sold and took some profit off one. I sold and took me some profit already. I'm happy with that. And I, and I want to stay in Tesla. I got two shares in another account. But I want to keep it here because it helps me keep my eyes on it. It gives me alerts and all those good things whenever you know it's going up or down. If it comes back down to 591, if it comes back down to 700, I'll probably buy another one. Like I said, it paid for itself. It made me money. I like that. Um, so, yeah. And crypto. Crypto, your buy price. Always make sure when you buy a stock, if you buy crypto, to know where do you want to get in and where do you want to get out. Got to have a plan. And crypto right now is on a good sale. Especially if you're looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those are two hot ones. Um, Dogecoin is down. If it doesn't have any news, it's not going to go back up. So I wouldn't buy it. And Shiba Inu is, I think it's, it doesn't, it's came down, but it has a major catalyst as far as the um, Shiba burn and things like that. People are talking about that. And it's just buy the rumor, sell the news. You know, it's a popular, it's a popular crypto right now. Everybody wants to be in the game. Everybody wants to get in the money. So Shiba at 30, it's at, Four zeros and 34 right now. Good time to buy in. I told somebody the other day on my Facebook platform that I would have got in between four zeros and 36 or four zeros and 40. Right now, the fact is that four zeros and 34, it's, it's on the money. I jump in, wait for it to come back up, get out, make some money. Now, you may not make no major gains, but, you know, it's always possible, especially if they do what they say they're going to do with the sheep of burn. So... Those are how that's how I'm feeling on the market for the, for Monday, and how I'm feeling about crypto. Um, anybody have any questions? So if not, what we'll probably do is we'll catch catch back up in the morning, and we'll see how what we can find. Because the goal is, like I said, we're on this journey to become wealthy. So we're trying to make sure every day we're finding something. You know, something to get in, somewhere to jump in, somewhere to get out. You know, even if we don't make money today. We, we, we're going to plan to make money for the end of the week. We, we're trying to be successful every day. And we're going to try and learn something every day. They say the key to wealth is knowledge. And we're trying to, I'm imparting knowledge on y'all every day. And y'all going to actually cause me to learn every day. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to work this thing out. Okay. And I don't see any questions. So I'm going to end the live. Y'all have a great night. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. What time in the morning? Um, I usually get up pretty early. I get up at five, so I'll probably be making a video around five or six in the morning. Um, if y'all prefer afternoons, then let me know and I'll try and be there in the afternoon. But usually I get up at five in the morning. I'm up early, you know, got to get to it. And I also told y'all, I'm just like y'all, you know, I work a nine to five with, I work seven to five, but I drive an hour to work. So I'm up. And yes, I will keep saving my videos. I will save my videos and I'll be posting them to my YouTube channel for y'all to watch. So make sure y'all like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It should be on my page. If not, it'll be there after this video. So I'll have my videos saved to Instagram. I'll have it saved to Facebook and it'll be on my YouTube channel. So be sure to like and subscribe there. Okay. So no other questions. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a good night.